told you I think that we made a mistake Cause you and I we lost our sight It's all about give and take Hey, this is Roy Richardson, the Tech Troublemaker, and welcome to the One-Off Technology Podcast Live. Tonight, we're going to talk about three things. First of all, we're going to talk about privacy. Wow, wouldn't it be nice if you had some privacy in some of the apps that you use and social media? We'll even, we're going to do some demos even. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make changes to your privacy settings that make you feel just a little bit better. And then also, we're going to talk about how to make use of old devices in your house. Maybe you retired an old iPhone or Android phone, and now, oh, well, what am I going to do with this device now? An old tablet, maybe I like a Samsung tablet. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about how NBC and YouTube TV are not getting along. By the way, YouTube TV is my favorite streaming app as far as watching TV goes. Um, but sadly, they're fighting. We're going to talk about it. Let's get started. All right, so privacy schmivacy. Well, you know, there's been a lot of reports in the news. We have talked about this on this show before. How can I do things to protect my privacy? And in reality, can you have privacy in a connected world? You can only have just a little bit of privacy. You can't really get complete privacy without just turning off your computer and just going away and living on an island with no electricity and no computers, no communication devices. That's pretty much where you are in the world. So let's talk about that. So first of all, Google privacy. So if you want to go and check your privacy in Google, you want to kind of see what your settings are, you want to go to um, myaccount.google.com slash privacy checkup. So let's go there. So here I am. Here is account.google.com privacy checkup. And I'm going to go back one screen and just show you this. So like, you know, you can show things you've done before, place you've been. This will show like I can go and see like a maps timeline. I can go and see stuff that I'm doing out there and I can make a determination. Hey, I want to turn on auto delete. Like after so much time, I want you to just delete on my web activity. Right now, I have it set to delete web activity after three months. Why three months? I don't know. I just felt like I needed to set it to delete something, so that's what I set it at. If I got really paranoid, I could turn this off and say, go, you know, include Chrome history. 
I mean, I take advantage of the history in my browsers. I literally can go from one computer to another to another, and I'm logged into them all, and I can actually go out and take a look at what Google has kept up about me. So that's one thing to think about. The other thing that's interesting is, you know, places I've gone. Um, so here's my maps timeline. I may have to be careful. I may be like revealing all my secrets. You know, wow. It literally can go, and I could literally go and choose today, and it would show me where I've been today because I have location tracking on. But you, you may want to turn that off. And see right here, look, my location history is on. So Google knows everywhere I go, which means I have no privacy with Google. But uh, long story short, I actually sold my digital soul to Google uh, quite a few years ago. So, yeah, 20 something years ago. And so Google owns my digital soul, so I'm not able to turn off uh, location tracking uh, because I did that. So everything I do on the internet, I have to tell Google. True confessions. It's 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 a thing. So, but you you don't have to do that. Okay. Um, and then I you know also I can my YouTube history. So maybe I don't want you to know that I went and watched some controversial person. I didn't, but maybe I did. Yeah, I did. Maybe I did. I ain't telling you. I ain't gonna cause the trouble tonight. I'm trying to be good tonight. I'm just gonna try to be good tonight. We're gonna see if that works. You know, I'm a tech troll maker, but I'm trying to be good tonight. And tonight, it's all about things that you can do to help yourself. And so here we are talking about Google activity. And you can go and change up your privacy, your people and sharing. Who are you sharing information with? I do share my information with my, my spouse because in the event I get kidnapped, she can go in here, find the location history, and figure out the last time my phone beamed home and said, hey, that's where I am. Um, yeah, you know, maybe not. But let's go look at other ways we can look at our privacy. All right. So next up, and here it is, you know, you review your, your activity and app activity settings. Now let's talk about Facebook. Facebook has a privacy checkup. And every once in a while, as a public service, because it's in trouble with regulators all the time, it will go and say, hey, oh, <laughs> go check your privacy. You might want to know. Are they doing this as a public? They're not doing this as a real public service. They're doing it because they're being very much under scrutiny. And so they want to like, well, you know, yeah. All right. So this is what the privacy checkup screen looks like. And I'm going to go to it for reals. For reals. So here is the privacy checkup screen. Oop, hang on. Speaking of privacy, all these 10,000 comments coming up there. All right. So right here on the screen, you can determine, and it tells you the last time you reviewed this. So it's been about eight months since I reviewed mine. I didn't want to sneak off, but I can go there and choose who can see what I share. Um, for example, by default, you know, you may be showing to friends and friends of friends. You may want to lock it down. You may not want to reveal that much stuff. You may want to just show it to just friends, or you may want to go public. Um, it talks about how to secure your account. It talks about how people can find you. Like, for example, if you allow it, they can find you by your phone number or your email address. I have those settings turned off. You got to look a little bit to find me. If you go to Facebook and you're not logged into Facebook, you will not find me. I'm inaccessible. Um, also, your data settings, that type of thing. And so, and then also your ad purposes. So, we're going to talk a little bit more about ad purposes here in just a minute. Um, next up. Facebook off Facebook activity. So here's the crazy thing. Facebook is tracking you even when you're not on Facebook. How are they doing that? They're doing different cookies and that type of thing in order to do tracking on you at all times. And you can control what they are actually able to see when you are not on Facebook. Um, go here. Here's the page right here. Facebook.com slash off underscore Facebook underscore activity. So if you go to this page right here, um, you can say, for example, it says, what is all Facebook activity? You can go right here and manage your all Facebook activity and tell it, hey, oh, it was my password, by the way. Um, uh, go back one screen because we're not doing it. Don't you love when things just blow up? We're not going to do my password right now. Okay, what the heck? We're going to do my password right now. Sure, why not? Sure. Are you happy now? Go. Let's see if it works. <gasps> it does work. So anyway, 
all Facebook activity. So I can go in here and tell it it's it's verified. I can go and clear history. I can disconnect all activity. And then here's a feature I really want you to look at. Manage future activity. Manage future activity. So you might say, you know what? From this day forward, I do not want you to track me. So we're going to click here. And you can go in here and turn off Facebook act for off Facebook activity because like I said there's tracking cookies it is tracking you everywhere you go everywhere so is that insane or what yes it is insane now next up let's talk about Facebook ads so in apps this is more about apps so these are apps that you have at some point allowed access to your Facebook account you need to periodically go check you may not trust that app anymore or you may have deleted that app and why does it still have access to your stuff so let's go take a look at that so here it is so here are some apps that have access to my Facebook account uh, restream uh, streamyard uh, service I don't remember what that is I might want to go look and see what service is um, my fitness pal I used to share my information my fitness pal I've just decided to get fat so it's none of its business um, at my fitness SoundCloud UPS my choice strangely UPS uses Facebook as a way to figure out if you are who you are um, my Bible app developer there's lots of them that have expired if you go look you'll see a lot of expired Amazon sweepstakes is still active it used to be Amazon used to have lots of sweepstakes on Facebook they've kind of gotten away from that so those are things that you need to look at so if you decide for example I don't know what the service what this service app is so I'm going to hit remove and I'm gonna say delete posts or videos and I'm gonna allow them sure if you want to tell them that I know I delete them I don't care so I'm removing service from my Facebook account I don't know why I even allowed it so adios goodbye um, I'm not sure why I ever let it have access to um, on my map my, my fitness I don't know why I ever did that I'm gonna go delete post events where I posted on my timeline. I, you know, maybe you don't want to delete those posts. That's up to you. But my thought is, I'm paranoid, and I want to get rid of those. Uh, all right. So let's see. Anyway, all right. Now. Those are just some examples of ways on Facebook that you can go and just verify that you haven't given away the kingdom and ways to just try to go and protect your privacy. Yeah. Now, how many use Venmo? Did you ever think about what Venmo is sharing out there? The default on Venmo is that every time you do a transaction, it shares it publicly with everyone. Everyone. Maybe you don't want to do that on Venmo. So here, did you know the default is to share publicly? So if you go to settings, this, um, this is on my phone, I took these screenshots, and go to um, privacy on the screen. And then when you get to the next screen, notice that the default is public. I'm like, what? I don't want that. I, maybe I want friends, maybe. But maybe I want it private. Maybe I don't really need the world to know that I'm transacting money. I don't know. It, it all depends. Um, I mean, I understand the social nature of Venmo. They're trying to get you to use it more because you're being social and you're trying to be funny. When you tell it that you want to go to private, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to change your default privacy settings? The correct answer is change anyway because the default is public and you're going private or you're going friends only. You need to decide for yourself what's important, what I want to do here. Yeah, what I want to do here. So... Do you care about your privacy? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you care about privacy and what apps kind of scare you. You know, when you think, oh wow, Facebook is really scary, Instagram's kind of scary. What apps out there kind of scare you and you you really care about your privacy? So, um, if you're watching, I'll get my big fat head out of the way. Um, if you like this channel, if you like this kind of content, Please hit the subscribe button. Be sure to to like and share this content with other people. Let them know, hey, that tech troublemaker guy, he's not really causing that much trouble. Okay, I'm trying the whole Google approach, do no evil. 
I know Google's failed at it completely, but I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to do no evil. So yeah, there we go. All right, next up. Next up, I wanna talk about useful ways that you can use old devices. So, you know, you got some old devices laying around your house. What are you gonna do with them, man? What are you gonna do with those old devices? It's time to do something else with them. It's time to find a new purpose for them. They're sitting around collecting dust. I've got an old Galaxy phone. What could I be doing with that? So let's talk about that, okay? So new uses for old devices. Bling. I like that little video thing. Anyway, all right. So you got that old Android or iPhone. You can use it as a security camera. Yeah, serious. You could use it as a security camera. There's an app called um, Alfred that will let you turn your old iPhone or Android into a security camera, and then you can remotely check it periodically. Yeah, probably not the best use for it, but certainly one. Roku remote. How many like me have misplaced a Roku remote and you really, really want to change to the next show on Netflix? Or you want to tell Netflix, no, I'm done. I've watched all the Longmire I could watch for a night. I really must go to bed. I've only watched 10 episodes tonight. I gotta go to bed. So um, you can you can use the Roku app on your iPhone or Android. On the, and so you take that old device and use it for that. As long as it has access to your Wi-Fi network, you can use it. You can use it as a music player for your kids. Hey, kids, go play some music. I've downloaded all of Amazon Music on here for you. Go listen. And they can do that offline. Um, Amazon and um, iPhone both kind of want you to phone home occasionally. So you have to connect it to the network and, and like double check to make sure you're still subscribed. But then it'll let you go about 30 days without phoning home. So you go on a trip, you load a device full of uh, music. There you go. Same deal with games. So I often like load up all my devices up and, and take them with me out there and let the kids use them and that type of thing. Yeah, of course now at this day and age, the kids are old enough now where everybody has a phone. But if your kids don't have phones, there you go. Um, social media. So if you're really paranoid, you wouldn't put any social media apps on your actual cell phone, mobile device. And you would just use your old phone for social media. So that when you leave home, you're done with social media. It's not tracking you anywhere because, hey, that phone, that old phone didn't go anywhere. It doesn't have a clue where you went. Okay. Next, old tablets. So maybe you got like a Samsung Galaxy tablet or you have an iPad. Uh, when I say Android... I'm talking about Samsung Galaxy Tab or some of the many Android tablets that are out there. Um, give them to your mom or your grandma to allow them to use FaceTime on iPad or to do Zoom on Android or iPad. I have a story to go with that, but I'm not telling it right now. Uh, same with games and music. So you can do things that will let you do offline. You can do games or music right there on the iPad or the old Galaxy Tab. And it makes a great digital picture frame. So if you've got Google Photos or Apple Photos... You can just have it start rotating through your favorite app, your favorite pictures on it, like a vacation or whatever. I know I love watching them. My TV has a Chrome, a Chromecast on it. It cycles through old pictures uh, for my photos. I'm like, That's really cool. I really like that. Um, oops. Uh, previous. All right. That old computer. Hang on. There we go. Get myself out of the way so you can see the text here. So while your computer, your old computer may not be fast enough to run Windows or Mac OS anymore, or maybe Mac or Windows both said, we'll drop you off on the side of the road on this really ancient version of our OS, which is not safe at all, then you could run Linux. Linux is a free operating system, and Ubuntu is a really fun flavor that will work on many older computers with less resources. So let's say that computer has four gig of memory. Well, that's a ton of memory for a Linux system. May not be enough for Windows or Mac OS, but it's a ton for Linux. And you get an opportunity to learn a new operating system that you can do anything with. You can learn to program. There's lots of cool things you can do with that. You could use it as a media server. So you could create shares on it. And there's lots of YouTube videos that go with instructions on how to do that. They'll tell you how to create shares on it. You can save all your files there. And then make sure you back up that device either with Google Drive or OneDrive if it's new enough or with an external hard drive, which it should work regardless of how old it is. 
or you could donate it to an organization you care about, though you make sure you wipe it first. So let's talk about that. So if you're going to responsibly recycle the device or donate it, you want to be sure to factory wipe it. You also want to remove any micro SD cards. Um, that's not an iPhone thing. iPhones never had micro SD, sadly. Um, they just made you buy phones of bigger capacity to make up for it. So you can go out and and be sure to take those cards out. Samsung phones used to have micro SD capabilities. HTC, several other vendors. Um, yeah, LG. Anyway, go and take the, the uh, SD cards out. Also remove the SIM card because on the SIM card that's in your phone, it contains your contacts. So if you're recycling an old phone, it contains copies of your settings and your contacts and other personal information. You need to make sure you take that SIM card out. Now, uh, the latest and greatest phones now are starting to use a software-based SIM, and so a factory wipe should take care of that. Now, lots of tech companies will take your old devices, trade-ins, and recycle properly. Dell, for example, Apple, both will say, hey, we'll give you so much money for your old devices, or we'll at least recycle it for you and not charge you anything to do it. That's the way to responsibly get rid of those old devices if you can't. Lots of cell phone providers like to take old phones and recycle them and um, give them to charities that, that are working with women and that type of thing who who you know, may be running, in, running from abuse and that type of thing. This is a way for them to have a cell phone so that they can communicate. And any cell phone you have can always forever and ever dial emergency 911, at least in the States. I'm not sure how it does in the rest of the world, but they can never turn that feature off. You're always able to dial 911 on any cell phone device. Oops. Previous. Okay, now, don't do this. Do not take a hammer to old devices if they have a battery in them. Remember, many devices have batteries in them, and these batteries often contain chemicals that will harm you if, if you touch them or accidentally consume it. You know, lithium is not really good for you. Don't do it. Um, or splash in your eyes. I can't see. Yeah, I, I need to be able to see. And so, yes, you know, be sure that you are careful with any devices that have batteries in them, old laptops, that type of thing. So be careful out there when you're getting rid of these kind of devices. Now, now, let's take some questions. I've seen some folks out there um, out there at so at least I want to do some shout outs because I had some folks come by and drop in and, and say hi. Um, so, of course, hey Marcus, how you doing? I'm, I didn't get a chance to say hi immediately when you came in, but thank you so much for coming by. Marcus, you got to watch this live stream. It's really great. Um, and I keep wanting to misspell his name. I am sorry, Marcus. I will, like, I'm going to get a tattoo that has your name on my arm. Um, it's going to be a temporary tattoo because I don't really want a tattoo. But I'm going to get a temporary one that has your name. Or I'm going to write it in um, permanent marker for a bit so that I can remember how to spell your name and I won't mess that up again. I'm sorry. Uh, Sammy Superstar dropped by. Hey, Sammy. And, of course, Marcus saying hi to Sammy. So, hey, thank you guys so much for coming by. Um, now, I want to talk about the, 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 the news story that cap off the night for me. NBC Universal and YouTube TV are fighting. NBC is saying, well, we'd like some more money. Really? Really? I mean, you got Peacock now, and you got the Peacock Streaming Network. Peacock is their streaming service that just shows NBC Universal content. You've got that, and if I had an antenna, I could pick up NBC shows for free. I don't really understand that. Yes, as Marcus said, no hammer. Um, oops. Oops. Oh, that's weird. There. No hammer. Yes. Don't go hammer your iPads or your Android devices or your old cell phones. Do not, do not, do not. That is my that is my advice. Don't. Anyway, so I'm a little sad that they're having a fight like this. And so what's YouTube TV's response? Hey, if we happen to lose access to NBC, we're going to drop your bill 10 bucks. What? So, so obviously YouTube TV is not fully expecting to win this fight because NBC is trying to jack up the fees. And so I'm sad about that, that NBC would do that. It sounds a little greedy to me. Don't you 
do advertisements on NBC? Uh, don't you have some shows that maybe somebody watches? Like This Is Us. There's a bunch of people watch This Is Us. Hopefully, you're making a bunch of money with that show. So, why are you trying to make us all have to pay more? Stop it. Stop being greedy. I'm getting tired of these networks being so greedy. And so, the funny thing is, is that if YouTube TV gives you 10 bucks back, you could go and subscribe to Peacock and watch those shows that NBC is... So it's kind of a weird thing. It kind of makes you wonder, is NBC doing this on purpose to make YouTube do a discount or so that you'll go and subscribe to Peacock? And so far I've watched Peacock and it's not that interesting. So the Peacock Network is not that interesting to me because, yeah, they need to work on that. Anyway, so, but the thing is, is YouTube TV is my favorite service. They do such a good job. They have such a great channel variety. And I actually went out to Twitter and basically told NBC, I won't miss you if you go away. I'm not watching your channels anyway. That's probably not true for all of us. I know that, but yeah, why you gotta be that way? I'm just saying. It's a tech troll maker, and that's what I say. Stop, stop, stop trying to be so greedy companies. It's just because they sit on Wall Street, you know, greed is good. It's not. It's not really that good. It's not that good. You really gotta stop it. Be unselfish. Give to the world. Let the world have it all, you know? Anyway. That's really all I've got for tonight. Hey, Big Red. Hey, what's up, man? Um, so tonight we talked about ways to go out and tighten up your privacy a little bit. And so be sure to go look at that stuff. Um, <laughs> how much is YouTube TV opposed to other services? Peacock stuff? So YouTube TV actually has like seven, like almost 100 channels. It's like 70 to 80, 100 channels. And it's right at almost 70 bucks a month. But it's got so many channels, and their DVR service is unlimited. So I can go out. I like to go out and find shows before they even come on. And I'll just say, hey, when that show comes on, go record it. But if the show's already come on, I can tell YouTube TV to go record it. And then if it plays again, it will automatically record it for me. I love that because I'll find like series of documentaries. I love documentaries. I'll see a documentary on CNN they're doing about... Uh, I was watching one about sitcoms. That was really cool. Or the history of comedy. I thought that was really cool. And I missed some episodes. I actually told, hey, go out and record those. And it keeps them forever. It used to just keep them eight months, but now it seems to keep them forever. So I've got Godfather recorded from last year. Sooner or later, I'm going to sit down and watch Godfather because I've only seen most of it. True confession. I know I'm supposed to watch it. I'm culturally required to watch it, but I haven't watched it yet. I will. I promise. I'm going to do it one day when I get some time. But YouTube TV is my favorite. Peacock only gives you access to NBC and Universal programs and programs that they own or made. So the crazy thing is, is there shows that <laughs> Peacock, well, NBC made, but they sold the rights to like Netflix. So for example, Seinfeld in October is coming to Netflix, but not Peacock because... They'd already sold the licensing rights for a period of time to Netflix. So it's a crazy thing. Now, if you're a huge fan of The Office and that is like your jam and you got to watch it, then I would say Peacock is okay. And you can get a lot of free content on Peacock. Um, you can watch for free. But the pro account all the way up is like basically $9.99 a month. But again, it's very limited selection. Um... Netflix is like $17.99, uh, well, it's $12.99 a month, um, and then all these different channels, so you just have to figure out which one's your favorite. Um, let's see, will YouTube TV let you know when things are supposed to be released, knowing where your show is coming on advance? Yes and no. It doesn't really, like, notify you so much, but if you know it's coming out, you can then search through the menu, and they will show you a future episode that's coming out. And you can tell it, go, hey, when it comes out, record it for me. I do it all the time. I'll see an ad for something somewhere on YouTube, like the Muhammad Ali on PBS, which I know PBS is free, but on YouTube TV, I can record it, watch it whenever I want, as opposed to using the PBS app. 
And so one day I'm going to sit down and watch the Muhammad Ali documentary by um, Ken Burns. Yeah, Ken Burns. So anyway, yeah, YouTube TV is my favorite. I'm a little sad about the whole NBC thing. But there you go. Write to your congressman and tell him you want free TV everywhere. And people stop being greedy. Anyway, that's our show for tonight. If you are re-watching, go and back up and watch the beginning so you can learn all the cool stuff I tell you about privacy. And also want to tell you about my new show on Sunday nights. On Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the new show, Sunday Tech Social. What's Sunday Tech Social? Well, we take somebody's tech problem and we in a group collectively talk about it and we try to find solutions for problems you may be having with different tech devices in your home whether it's your cell phone your amazon devices your i can't say the g word okay fine google devices whether it's your favorite application whatever's going on yeah yeah definitely learn more about privacy on your iphone luckily iphone in theory has the best privacy settings but all those apps that you told not to follow you, they're not always observing that. So you got to be careful. Every time you install, you install a new app, it says, oh, this app might like, know if it's okay for them to track you. Say no. Just say no. You don't want to be tracked. And But the older apps are still in there that are not updating. They still have permission to track you. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much to everybody that came by tonight. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great, great week. And that's it. I'm out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Mm-hmm. Well, by the way, if you're social, follow me out there. Tech Trouble MKR on Twitter and on Facebook. Again, they wouldn't send me the files. They're lost. They're lost. All right. And if you're watching, please leave a comment or ask a question. I will get back to you. I'll even give you a right answer if I happen to know it or can Google it because that's that's my guarantee. Thank you, Tech Troublemakers. Thank you all for watching. And good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>